In this video, I will show you how to deploy your own application in Kubernetes cluster. So let's look at a common setup when deploying your own application in Kubernetes. You commit your code to Git that triggers Jenkins build that packages your application with its environmental configuration into a Docker image. And this Docker image then gets pushed to a Docker registry. And this can be Nexus, it could be AWS container registry or some other private Docker repository. And now that you have your Docker image in the private registry, the question is how do you get this Docker image on your Kubernetes cluster? For images like MongoDB, Elastic, uh, some of them that I've shown you in other videos, there it's pretty straightforward because um, they are hosted in a public repository like Docker Hub and anyone can access them. So I can pull them on my machine without access permission. But your own application lives in a private repository and needs explicit access from the cluster. So how do you pull the application images from private repository on Kubernetes cluster? You do that using two steps. The first one is you create secret component in Kubernetes that contains access token or credentials to your Docker registry so that it can authenticate with the registry. And second is you configure your deployment or your pod to use that secret using a specific attribute which is called image pool secrets. So I'm going to show you all that in practice. And in order to show you the demo, I have um, my environment already set up. So first of all, I have a Docker private repository, which is hosted on AWS. So this is the container registry. And I have one repository there for my app, which is a simple Node.js application. If you want to learn how to set up AWS container registry, I have a separate video about that, where I demo the whole process of tagging and building the image locally and then pushing it to AWS container registry. So there you can basically learn how to get to this state. And I will link that video here. And in addition, I will also link the Git repository of this my app application if you want to use it. And inside the repository, I have three images with different version text. So we're going to use that for the demo. And locally, I have a Minikube cluster set up which is currently empty. So we're going to start from a clean state. So the first step, as I said, is to create a secret component, which will have the access token or credentials to this private uh, repository, which will allow Docker to actually pull that image inside the cluster. So the first thing we need to do in order to create this secret is we need to log in to this repository. And for that, there is a Docker login command that looks like this. So basically with Docker login, you provide some options, which is username or password, and you have the Docker repository endpoint there. And the third one is password standard in, which basically means that you don't uh, type in the password on the command line, but you take it from uh, a standard input source. This is more secure, and I think this is a recent addition or, or more recent addition in Docker because you don't have your password written in the command line history. So I recommend you use this one generally. So for AWS, if you see the view push commands, there is a login command here actually that gets the login password into standard input and then you can do Docker login on that. But what I'm going to show you just for demonstration is I'm going to show you the complete login command that this will execute. And this is the one. So you have Docker login, the username, this is a password, and I'm showing you the password because um, I'm going to delete the repository afterwards. This is the email flag, which I believe is deprecated in the new Docker uh, version. And there is this URL. And this is basically the endpoint of my private repository which is this one right here. Okay. So with this command, I will be able to log in. So if I execute that command, so Docker login with all the credentials, I see login succeeded. And what it does in the background is it creates or it generates a config JSON file 
that holds the authentication to my private repository. So in dot docker directory in user folder, you have a config JSON and this holds the repository access. Now there are two ways that this config JSON will store the authentication. Either you will have the authentication directly here or you'll have the external cred store. This is more secure because your access token isn't stored in a file, but in a credential store. And this is the file that we need for the secret. So now whenever Docker tries to pull the image from my private repository, like this image, for example, it will use those credentials for this private registry to pull that image, to authenticate itself and pull that image. However, there is a small problem with this specific file, which is that I'm running my cluster in Minikube and Minikube doesn't have access to my cred store because it's running in a virtual box, right? So it cannot access my max credential store. So this is not going to work. So when the Docker, which is packaged in the Minikube, which I explained in another video, you can check that out, how Minikube is set up. So Minikube has its own Docker. So when Docker inside the Minikube tries to pull that image from this private repository, it will see the cred store and it won't be able to access that. Okay, but I showed you this one to demonstrate how Docker login works with cred store. So what I'm going to do now is enter the Minikube. So I'm going to SSH into Minikube, which goes like this. You can do this pretty easy. And here I am in the directory of home Docker. And just to check, there is no dot Docker here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in to my private repository from Minikube Docker directly not from my laptop. Okay, and let's see how that looks like. So I'm going to copy that command like this. And by the way, Minikube has a recent, more recent version of Docker. That's why it doesn't recognize the email flag because it got deprecated. So I'm going to remove that. So you have the same username, password and the private repository URL. So I'm going to execute that. Remember, I'm in the Minikube, login succeeded. And now if I do minus A, I see the dot Docker directory created. And now we can see what's inside the config JSON. So you see config JSON doesn't have a credential store anymore, but it has, this is the repository URL. It's the same one here. And the credentials or the authorization is inside those brackets. So right here you have the auth authorization token, which is this whole thing. So depending on your setup, um, it might look like this for you or like this. But as I said, Minikube can't access my cred store on my operating system. So that's why I'm logging in directly from the Minikube Docker. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use that file. So this file right here, to create the secret for Kubernetes cluster. And this is a secret configuration. So basically I have the secret kind, the name of the secret and note the type here. So it's Docker config JSON, which is its own secret type for this specific use case. And the dot Docker config JSON, the value of this attribute will contain the base 64 encoded contents of this config JSON file. So all of this base64 encoded will be assigned as a value here. Now, since I have my kubectl set up on my laptop, not in the minikube, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that file from inside the minikube to my host so that I can use it for my kubectl command. So I'm going to clear this up and I'm going to secure copy it from Minikube. And by the way, I'm going to collect all these commands and the configuration files, and I'm going to put them in Git repository and link it in the video description. So you can check that out if you want to follow along the video. So I'm going to type out the whole command and I'm going to explain it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to secure copy. And for that, I'm going to need SSH key, which you have in a variable like this. So it will be the same for you. You can directly copy this command. 
and this is the source. So we, we want to copy it from Minikube. This is a user inside Minikube and this is the IP address. So this is the server IP. You can also log it on your console and you can see what the value of it is. And inside that, I want to copy dot docker slash config JSON. And I want to copy now is the destination. I want to copy it in my Docker config. So I'm going to replace the one that I have. And as I mentioned, directly having the authorization inside the config JSON file is not as secure as having it in cred store. So if you are running your Kubernetes cluster on some uh, servers, you may want to use credential store instead, but this is just for Minikube demonstration. So I'm going to execute that. And now if I check my own Docker config, see, I have replaced the content. Now I can go and create the secret from this file. So as I said, this should be base64 encoded content. So what I'm going to do is pipe that and base64 encode it. And I'm going to paste it directly in here. Okay, so this is my secret. Or if you want to spare yourself this, you know, base64 encoding it on the command line and then copying the contents there, you can actually do that with kubectl command as well. All right. So let's clear that up and I'm going to show you that kubectl way as well. So the kubectl command will be like this, kubectl create secret and this is the secret type generic. So that's the name of the secret. And let's break the line to have it structured from file attribute from which file the secret content should be created. And this is the same attribute that we have in the secret file. Docker config JSON. This is the same as this one here. And now we have to specify the file, which it should base 64 in code. And finally, we specify the type, which is docker config JSON type. So it's going to create the secret of docker config JSON type from these files contents and set it as a value for this attribute. So I'm going to apply that. So this will do the same as applying this configuration file here. So we have our secret my registry key in the cluster. So just to review it now, we did Docker login. In this case, I did from Minikube's Docker. And then we use that file. First of all, I copied that file from Minikube to my host where I execute the kubectl. And I use that file to create the secret, which now has contents like this. Let's actually see that. Get secret. This is output YAML file that was created. And I have my data here, docker config JSON, and this is the base64 encoded contents. Now there's a second way to create this docker config JSON secret where you don't have to do it in two steps. You don't have to do docker login and then create the secret from that config JSON file. You can do both in one step. So let's see that one as well. So it's gonna be kubectl create secret. And now instead of generic, I'm going to specify Docker registry, the secret type, and let's give it, um, let's give it name, my registry key two. And here I have different flags, which are specific for Docker registry, right? So I have Docker uh, server, and I'm actually going to execute this command again, so that I see the values. So I have Docker server, which is my AWS private registry URL. So I'm going to put that here. Then I have Docker username, which is AWS. I have Docker password, which is this whole thing here. And this is basically it. So this command will do both steps in one. So it's going to do Docker login and it's going to create a secret based on the login authentication. So if I execute this, I have both secrets and I can use any of those for my deployment. Now you may be asking why there are two different ways to do the same thing. Can we just go with one? But there's a difference between the two. And the difference is that with this command, you can only create one secret that has access token 
for one Docker registry, for this specific registry, for example. But it's convenient because you do Docker login and secret creation in one step. However, if in your cluster you're using more than one private registry where you pull the images from, then it will be more practical, more convenient to go uh, with the other option, the first one, because, for example, if you have five private repositories that I want to pull the images from, I can do Docker login in each one of them and all the access tokens will get stored in this config JSON file like this. So you're going to have a list of them. And if you use that file in your secret, then with one secret, you can have access to all the repositories. So this is a difference. So depending on your use case, you may uh, prefer to use one or the other. Okay, so now I've cleared everything and we see that we have our two secrets. And now the second step is to configure a deployment for my app application. So I have a deployment configuration here, and this is just the minimum configuration you need for deployment. And this is our pod specification. I have one container, the name is my app, and this is the image and the image name of the application has to be the complete name, which includes the repository URL and the image name. So it's going to be the complete image URL. I'm going to copy that and paste it. So this is the repository URL. This is the image name and this is the image version. Because if you just write this one, Docker won't know which repository to pull it from. And I have the port. 3000 because that's where uh, my application runs is a Node.js application. And now since I already built this uh, locally on my laptop, I have that image available locally. Show that. So 1.3 with this version, I have it locally. However, because we are testing the pulling uh, the image from the private repository, I want to force Docker to pull that image from a repository instead of taking it from the local Docker repository, which is on my laptop. And to do that, you can force it by image pull policy attribute. And here you can say always. And every time pod is created, this will force Docker to repull the image, uh, even if it already exists locally on your local host. So that's what we're going to do. And the next step will be to configure this deployment uh, with the secret. So I have to give this deployment access to the secret that I created so that it will be able to pull that image from the registry. However, I just want to demonstrate what it's going to do or how it's going to behave without that secret configuration. So I'm just going to leave it like this and let's actually apply this configuration. Apply. I have it in documents like this. And if I do kubectl get pod, I see image pull back off. Oops. Yes. And it can connect to the container because it's waiting, trying and failing to pull the image because it doesn't have um, authorization. So the pod started, but container can't be pulled. So it's going to retry now. Uh, multiple times. So I'm going to delete that. And now let's actually add that secret reference to the Docker authentication. And the way to do that is in the pod specification. So on the same level as containers, we're going to configure a attribute, which is called image pull secrets, image pull secrets. And here we provide the name of the secret. And this is it. These two lines will configure deployment with access to the secret that contains Docker registry access. Okay, so let's apply that configuration again. Documents. And let's see the pod. And you see it's running because it was able to pull the image. So here we see pulling image, successfully pulled image. So that's how you configure uh, the deployment. Now, since we have the second secret as well, let's actually make sure that both are working. So I'm going to rename my deployment. Let's call it 
like this and I'm gonna use the second uh, secret here and let's execute that again as well so this is how you configure your cluster to be able to pull the images from private repository there is one important note here the secret has to be in the same namespace as the deployment or stateful set or any other component that you're creating that needs to pull the image from that repository it has to be in the same namespace so, which means we have three applications in three different namespaces that all pull images from the private repository you have to create the secret three times in each namespace so to quickly wrap up in order to configure that you have to create a secret there's two ways to creating a secret either you can do docker login manually and use the generated config json file to create the secret out of it or you can do it in one step using kubectl create secret of docker registry type where you provide all the credentials in that uh, command and the second step you will use that secret in the deployment or any other component that needs to pull the image from the docker registry i hope this was helpful and you learned something from this video if you want to see other videos about kubernetes you can subscribe to my channel and follow all my tutorials thank you for watching and see you in the next video